a one-way ANOVA is a more generalized version of the student t-test. And what it lets you do is it lets you check to see whether multiple distributions, more than one, have the same mean or not. What, is, let's, what does this mean? So let's take a look and say that we had three groups. We have group chocolate, group pistachio, and let's say we had group vanilla. And each of these represents a different type of ice cream flavor. And for each of these, we have 100 people who tried one of these three different groups. So 300 people total. So 100 here, 100 here, and 100 here. And then they rated how much they liked the ice cream that they tried. We want to know if there's a difference between how much people like the various ice creams. In this case, the null hypothesis would be that there is no difference between how much on average people like chocolate versus pistachio versus vanilla. That means we would say something like the mean for chocolate is equal to the mean for pistachio, which is equal to the mean for vanilla. That's what, that's what the null hypothesis would say, is that there's no difference between any of these flavors. The means are the same. How much people rate that they like them is equivalent. Now, how would you go about testing this? Well, you could come up with a simple approach and say, well, I want to test and see whether the rating for chocolate and pistachio are different with a t-test. You could certainly do that. And you could do what we call multiple t-tests. And this would test, for example, the pairing of chocolate and pistachio. And it would compare it to the pairing of then, say, chocolate and vanilla. And then it would compare that to the pairing of pistachio and vanilla. And so in this way, right, we've tested every single pair to see whether the, statistic, the mean is statistically uh, significant or not. Did the difference in the means are statistically significant or not? And so we get one t-test for this, t-test for that, and t-test for that. And if they all come back as not statistically significantly different, then we can't reject the null hypothesis that, that these means are at all different. And you might say, well, that's great. We've solved our problem. We can go on our way. The, the simple thing that we knew about t-tests Allow, allowed us to generalize to, uh, to multiple populations. But the problem is, every time you do these tests, you end up compounding your error. It actually multiplies all together. And so you're somewhere on the order, not quite, but around, if you're doing a 5% confidence interval, you're actually eating away into your confidence interval, not quite by multiplying it by, by the confidence interval, but something very similar to that. And so you end up with a statement, if, these, if you, if you uh, can't reject the null hypothesis, that these are indistinguishable, but you've lost a lot of your power. Your, your confidence interval is no longer 5%. It's more like on the order of 15%. And that's terrible, right? We don't want that. Why is it that just because we're adding another, another group and performing what seems like a similar test of trying to figure out whether the means are statistically different or not, should we lose so much and have to give up so much of our power? Well, enter the one-way ANOVA. That's exactly what this 
helps you to do. It basically can perform a similar test to see whether or not the means are statistically different or not in the case that you have three or more groups and it scales to as many groups as you want. You can have as many flavors of ice cream here and you can perform the same test. So you, once you do the one-way ANOVA, you test all of these groups together all at once. And if your result is statistically significant, then you have to accept the alternative hypothesis and reject the null hypothesis. But the alternative hypothesis is, is a bit nuanced. You have to be careful about what this is. The alternative hypothesis when rejecting uh, the null hypothesis in the case that you have an, a one-way ANOVA result that's significant is that there are at least two groups two groups whose means do not match. With unequal means. Or said that, you know, in the terms of, of, of the statistics, and there, are two, there are at least two groups with statistically different, statistically significantly different means. Now, the ANOVA tells us nothing about which group, which two groups have different means, or whether there's all three groups have different means. All you can say is that this particular statement does not hold, is not true. And so what that means is one of these equal signs doesn't hold. We don't know which one. And we are not capable of doing, of determining any of that with just this test. But that is what the ANOVA is designed to do. You can do further follow-up tests to then figure out maybe which of these groups is the one that doesn't match. But this is the purpose of the ANOVA. It can get you to reject this null hypothesis with the same confidence that you would want that you can do with a, a single uh, two-group test via a t-test and get that same 5% confidence interval.